Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today is the first day of Victober. As I have said in a lot of videos now, Victober is a month-long read-along hosted by Katie of Books and Things, Kate Howe and Lucy of Lucy the Reader. Because it is Victober, I thought now would be a good as time as any to vlog the month. Well, firstly, I don't know whether I'm going to make it through the whole month, but I do think that I'll definitely be able to do up until Sunday. A few booktubers have just announced a collaborative video project of which I'm part of, which is The Fate of Jane Moore, and that is a choose your own adventure story. A few months ago, Kate Howe got in touch with us and asked whether we'd like to be a part of it, and we joyously agreed. We have been writing and reading portions of this story, putting it all together. We play with time a bit, but it's our story. I feel like we're okay to do this. Today, being the 1st of October, I was feeling particularly autumnal. If you can recall, the first day of October last year, I ended up making a sweet potato and butternut squash curry and I considered doing something similar today. I didn't know whether this was going to work so I didn't record the process but I'm glad to say that it did work. Last week my mum was at a farm shop and came back with a load of apples. Unfortunately there were a few in there that were a bit past their best. I found some porridge oats of my dad's he wasn't going to have and for whatever reason I had this idea spring into my mind to make some sort of apple sauce, have that as a side with this porridge. So I did that this morning. I peeled and cut the apples, then I added sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg and a slice of lemon and just left it on boil until it had softened enough for me to mash it. I'm a person who has not consumed sugar in over a year. I'm worried already about how this little bit of sugar I've just consumed, whilst I was smelling it, I thought, this smells quite like punch, like a Christmas punch. And so I removed a ladleful to taste it, thinking I could make something non-alcoholic to have towards Christmas, similar to like an apple tea, because um, I quite like an apple tea, I must say. That worked out. That's left me feeling particularly autumnal. I mean, apple, cinnamon and nutmeg. When aren't you going to feel autumnal with the, when those flavours are around? Also, porridge is something that I only usually have in autumn and winter and very sparingly because you can go quite sick of that quite quickly. That was one autumnal thing that I've already done today to celebrate Victober. That's the thing. Now, I equate Victorian literature with autumn. And so the two blend together in my head all the time. I have a cup of tea over here that comes from the last of my salted caramel Lebkuchen tea that I got from Bird and Blend last year and it says it doesn't go off till May next year which is good because I've been using this for a while. This was one of their Christmas teas last year. I just thought that it would be a nice particularly good thing to start off Victober correctly. Right, let's talk about some books now. I am currently 110 pages into The Law and the Lady by Wilkie Collins. A few months ago I saw that Waterstones were having a thing where you got double points depending on what you bought that weekend. I went to Kate, I said can you recommend some books? She recommended The Law and the Lady and I started it this morning, hooked straight away. Read 100 pages before my father came home and I had to get on with some housework. It is a Victorian novel obviously but it reads like a thriller. I feel like I've got all the intrigue of Agatha Christie here and he's already impressing me much more than he did with The Haunted Hotel when I read that last year. I am not sure what to make of the character of Valeria, who is our first person narrator here. I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt because I think that everything she's doing comes from a place of love and she doesn't want to believe she can't trust her husband. But honestly, so far, quite sensational. And then another thing I need to do today is read 30 pages of Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This is for the read-along being hosted by Kate and Emily of Novel Novels. It has been 12 years since I last read Jane Eyre and do you know I actually read it for pleasure back then. This is my granddad's Reader's Digest copy and upon his death I got given all of these. So I have this edition of Jane Eyre, the similar edition of Great Expectations amongst others all in a drawer. A lot of them haven't actually been touched because I wasn't interested. Yeah, I recall reading this and 
quite enjoying it back in the day, so I'm looking forward to revisiting this one. And something else I want to do, I wanted to record some poetry, which will have gone online on Friday, from the Victorians, and I happened across these Penguin Little Black Classics that I've had in a box for years now and still haven't read them. I will just remove the ones that have nothing to do with the Victorians at all. I've got Thomas Hardy's Woman Much Missed here. I don't believe it's Victorian. I think Queen Victoria had died by this point, but Thomas Hardy. I've got Oscar Wilde's Only Dull People Are Brilliant at Breakfast, which is his quote, and I said I was going to read this last year. I only found out about this one because somebody else mentioned it on their channel, and that is the Great Winglebury Jewel by Charles Dickens. I did not know that I had this in this box, but as soon as I saw that, I thought I'd come and check, so I had this. I have Charles Darwin's It Was Snowing Butterflies and John Ruskin's Traffic, which are both taken from longer pieces of non-fiction, and I've never read any non-fiction from this time, so I thought I could rectify that this year with these short pieces. And finally, I have The Old Nurse's Story by Elizabeth Gaskell, which also includes another story called Curious If True. I'm planning on reading The Old Nurse's Story today as well, as it is just 30 pages. I've got about an hour's reading here, and then however long I choose to spend with The Law and the Lady. I considered finishing this entirely today, but now I think I'm going to try and get as close to page 300 as possible, because I know that usually on Fridays and Saturdays I don't read as much with them being work days. And that's me for today. I will hopefully catch up with you again tomorrow. It's Friday and I have arrived to work to discover that someone has left a bin bag in front of the container. They're doing this a lot more nowadays as though they believe that everything pandemic related is over. Personally, I'd like to just be able to dispose of that and say, look, we have no idea what's in here. Instead, what has to happen is I have to get my latex gloves on, my mask on, and touch something I'm not supposed to touch for two to three days because of the thoughtlessness of certain people going around nowadays. I'm supposed to still believe that they're being charitable because they still brought it to a charity shop. But the fact of the matter is, since we're not able to see a lot of what's going in this container next to me, a lot of people have actually started donating things that we haven't accepted in nearly 15 years. And we are finding people are donating actual rubbish rather than just going to a tip. I could probably get in trouble for saying that, but hey. After I spoke to you yesterday, I went and read some more of The Law and the Lady by Wilkie Collins, and I think I know exactly where this story is going. I won't mention what I think is going to happen, but this character of Valeria has discovered that someone called Sarah McCallan, or McClanlan, I can't pronounce it, was poisoned. And now Valeria is trying to figure out from the court transcripts whether the person they believe did it did actually do it. I have a guess as to how this is going to go, and if that's the case, I'm going to be severely disappointed indeed if I figured it out. The storytelling's still great, and it's still reading like a Victorian thriller, which was unexpected for me. I'm finding it incredibly fast-paced to get through. I didn't read any of Jane Eyre yesterday. I expected to, I planned to, but it didn't happen. I didn't do as much on Duolingo as I planned yesterday either. For whatever reason, when it gets to the evening and it gets to five o'clock, I'm into this rhythm then. So five o'clock comes around, the chase is on, and I am generally making tea for everyone. And that can take an hour, and then I have to make my own food as well. So I'm usually not sitting down until between seven and half past for my own tea. And last night, because I have some sausages that are going out of date today, I decided I was going to have sausage. I cooked the sausages. I didn't take them out of the oven, though. So I got up this morning and had to have recooked sausages because I couldn't let them go to waste. I read The Old Nurse's Story by Elizabeth Gaskell last night, 30 pages. There is a short introduction at the start of this book that says it was released in Charles Dickens' magazine, Household Words, 
for Christmas. So I believed I was going to get a light-hearted little tale. I forgot one major thing about Christmas in Victorian times, and that is that it is filled with ghosts. I ended up reading the old nurse's story in bed last night because I thought I was going to get a cosy tale. Instead, I mildly terrified myself. And it's strange. Stephen King, I can read stuff by him, not be scared at all. I can read any sort of horror fiction. Even The Exorcist didn't get to me. But you give me the sort of familial tales of Victorian ghosts and a Victorian ghost is just able there's something eerie there something that just gets under my skin and I don't know whether it reminds me it's because it reminds me of stories that my family members have told me in the past but it's just something that tingles along your spine a bit I'm hoping that the next story which is is it called Curious If True yes Curious If True I'm hoping that that's not going to be another terrifying tale. I've brought it to work with me in the hopes of being able to read it before anyone gets here, um, so I can then check this book off for Victober. I do, you know, I have more of these little black classics to read. I haven't decided which the next one will be. Tonight, my plans when I get home, my sister should be arriving back from her holiday today. Also, today is the day that our Victorian Choose Your Own Adventure story, The Fate of Jane Moore, goes online and I'm hoping, beyond hope, that so many of you are on there and enjoying that. It's a bit of a weird route to go down to actually get to the story, the portion of the story that I read. It might not be the most popular route people go down because it's a rather short story then. I've had the pleasure of getting to view a lot of these before anybody else and I also know that way you know the certain ways this story could go and who you get to see so I'm thrilled with having all this prior knowledge and I'm hoping everyone else is being as excitable as I am about this. With all that being said I probably won't sit down to read until nine o'clock tonight if I think about everything that I've got to do when I get home but it will be fine so I think today what I, I've decided and this is no shade towards Kate and Emily with their read-along because theirs is a very relaxed approach to the read-along anyway it's just that we all come together and read Jane Eyre I think that I'm going to focus on the law and the lady today and tomorrow adding in one of the little black classics. Sunday, I will finish off reading The Law and the Lady and then possibly move into one of the other books. We will see how everything goes and how I'm feeling tomorrow. It's Saturday. The day is grey. It is dismal. It is positively autumnal. The sky is grey. It's raining. My hair is going to get ruined today. And yes, I am wearing bright green gloves. It got very cold last week. And so I went into our glove box at work and found these. And they might be decidedly feminine, but I have somewhat dainty hands. So they were the only thing that fit me. Yesterday went as I said it would. I got home around about half past five and immediately got to work on making tea for everybody. My sister was home so I went to see Floss because I hadn't seen her since Monday. Made my own tea, sat down at quarter past seven as I said I would. Watched a bit of YouTube. I didn't have the opportunity to watch any of the Choose Your Own adventure yesterday so that might be a Sunday occupation. I was of the lucky position that Kate asked me to check whether all of the links were working, so I did sneakily follow one route. Um, so I have already done one of the routes, and that one gives Jane the happy ending, but obviously I know there are loads of other endings and loads of other ways this story can go. I finished reading that little penguin black classics which had I only had curious if true to read. Elizabeth Gaskell had me feeling the same way I felt with The Master and the Margarita. This 
short story had touches of magic in there and something almost pantomime-esque about it and I wondered whether that was the whole point of the story to be somewhat of a pantomime because it was released around Christmas time so it would make sense. I only read one chapter of The Law and the Lady. If anything, I still think that this story is going a certain way but we will see. I've only read one more chapter and we're still going back through the trial of this man. I'm trying to avoid spoiling Victorian novels because I know that I hated when I had one spoiled for me by reading the introduction. So I try and keep from doing that. It's not like my David Copperfield video where I was throwing spoilers here, you know, left, right and centre. So I'm hope I'm still hopeful that I'll finish The Law and the Lady tomorrow. I have brought the Great Winglebury Jewel to work with me today by Charles Dickens. And that actually comes from Sketches by Boz. I realised that I haven't replaced the copy of Sketches by Boz that I usually have behind me in my videos. So I can only read The Great Winglebury Jewel and whatever else is in this short collection. Not sure whether I'll get to any whilst I'm at work today because I usually come in late on a Saturday just because the roads are clearer. I have no idea what I'm making for people's tea tonight. I th might throw fish and chips at my father. Um, but I'm already mad at myself because I had a spoonful of mashed potato last night. Last night I discovered some more Penguin Black Classics that I could use for Victober and realised that the Charles Darwin one also counts as diaries so I can fulfil that portion of a challenge just to read diary entries. So I have that by Charles Darwin and I just found another which I found quite by accident. I think I found it because I was looking up Dickens' books and I saw that he'd worked with a certain writer and when I typed that writer's name into Google it showed a Penguin Little Black Classic that I happened to own. I went and checked, it was there. So I just went through and I found some more authors that wrote stuff in Victorian times. So they might be nice little things to read alongside the huge mountains of books I've got to read. I might like to spend this next week reading The Tent of Wildfowl Hall and then watch the adaptation next Sunday. I don't know, everything's up in the air really, isn't it? I could decide that I'm throwing everything out of the window and read something completely different, just being me. I hope your Victober's going well currently and I'll see you tomorrow to round this off. There's a lot going on with farming at the moment with my family that I have no knowledge of and I've just been told that my mother is on her way home. Therefore, I've decided that I'm going to round this vlog off here, which is Sunday morning on the 4th of October. Talk about what I'm reading today, with continuing my plans for today. So firstly, I've read the first story in The Great Winglebury Jewel by Charles Dickens. So this, the stories in here come from sketches by Boz and I have never laughed as much as at a Dickens than in this first story. So this story is just your classic case of mistaken identity. I think at the start of Charles Dickens' career, because I'm pretty sure that's where Sketches by Boz was, correct me if I'm wrong, I think with the great Winglebury Jewel were quite early in his career and I found The Pickwick Papers, which is his first novel, had some of the same humour as here. I was laughing. There was this line where this older lady, someone's confronting her for running away with a young man, and she says, well, did you expect me to run away with an old one? I was in hysterics, so I am quite looking forward to the second story in here. These are quite nice to read um, because they make you think that you're doing more with Victober. Well, they make me think I'm getting through more with Victober. And then I'm currently halfway through The Law and the Lady by Wilkie Collins at the page 200 mark. I am going to be finishing this today and I have also decided that I am going to be recording a full video with spoilery thoughts talking about this book at length. I say that now but as with Hamnet and as with other books that I have said I'm going to review in the past I might not do it until very late in the year but basically this book is reminding me of what I like about Agatha Christie and I really am surprised by how 
fast paced this Victorian book is. So um, yeah, currently really heartily recommend this. And if you do like a detective novel, you wouldn't go wrong with reading this one because the protagonist reminds me so much of some of the classic female characters in detective fiction. And for a book that was released, was this 1875, it says, it's quite surprising. I mentioned yesterday how I had gone through my collection of Penguin Little Black Classics and got a few more. So I have um, I have Mary Kingsley's A Hippo Banquet and this one comes from Travels in West Africa. Guess what? I now have something to fulfil the diary or letters prompt because this comes from a diary as does the Charles Darwin book that I mentioned the other day. So I do have books that are going to fulfil a prompt now, this, you know, despite the fact that they're rather short. Then I have Of Street Pieman, which is Henry Mayhew. Not sure I'll get to this one. It's more about the poor in London. But again, he's chronicling stuff about London life. So it might be good for me to read to give me more of a non-fiction and more of a context surrounding Victorian life. Then I have Olala by Robert Louis Stevenson. I am probably pronouncing that wrong, but this is, was published in 1885 and according to the back, it's a chilling Victorian Gothic novella with vampirism and tormented love. Why has no one mentioned this to me before? Or if you have, I've ignored it. Flaming heck. Well, I'm going to keep this till the end of the month, um, you know, for the nice Halloween witchy stuff going on um, because I've got some more horrific novels that I plan to read that week but oh goodness that's oh that's that's a turn up for the books uh, then obviously I have Lord Arthur Savile's Crimes which I am dismayed not to have read yet and A Slip Under the Microscope by H.G. Wells which is two stories the second story in here isn't Victorian but the first one is so I will be reading the Victorian story and then the second one will just be a nice bonus next I also ordered Shirley by Charlotte Bronte from Waterstones and this is the group read for Victober so I need to catch up with this. I am a bit upset about my copy of this however because it has arrived and the top corner is bent and a few of the front pages are. However I have been wondering whether this means that at some point in future I could go back and I could make notes on this copy since it's already a bit damaged. I shouldn't be too unhappy because I'd saved up enough money with Waterstones and enough points that I actually got this book for free um, in gratuita. I don't know, I mean technically I had to spend a lot of money to be able to get a free book but that's happened over the course of a year. I'm disappointed about the crease here but I am looking forward to this exceptionally long book. I've noticed that with these Oxford editions there are a lot of notes and you have to avoid those notes because that's how I had Anna Karenina spoiled for me. Today I also want to catch up with a bit of reading of Jane Eyre. This plans to be a week that is filled with the Brontes because as well as reading Shirley and Jane Eyre tomorrow I really want to make a start on The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. I've looked at the adaptation and apparently the adaptation runs to three hours. I don't know whether I'm going to watch a three hour adaptation all in one go or whether I'm going to space it out over a few days next week. But currently my plan is to read 75 pages of The Tenant of Wildfell Hall every day this week to finish it next Sunday and then embark upon watching the adaptation. Yeah, that's me. Over the next few weeks you will see hopefully a few acquisitions I have made because I decided to use a bit of spare money I had hanging around and by spare money I just mean the voucher I was given for my birthday from a friend that could only be spent on books. Um, I don't know why I feel that I need to quantify every purchase I ever make but um, specifically these books that will be arriving in the next few weeks. I don't know how long they're going to take to get here, but I have used the voucher that a friend gave me to purchase these books. And so hopefully they will arrive before the end of the month and I can make a start on them because they were supposed to be part of my Victober TBR. And then as well, I, touch wood, have two weeks 
off work soon in which I should be able to get a ton of reading done but we will see hopefully I do get that time off and then I can because I know I'm going to fall behind reading Shirley and Jane Eyre I'm already behind reading both of them aren't I I'm supposed to be at page 60 of this today and I'm supposed to read 120 pages of Jane Eyre if I read 30 pages a day so things aren't going too well but I'm enjoying myself and I think that's all any of us can do with Victoba is continue to enjoy ourselves. Tuesday I currently have planned to do a few choose your own adventures on the on Kate Howe's channel. I just haven't had the opportunity yet and as I say today looks like it's going to be... I still think I'll be able to read all day, I just wouldn't have been able to come and update you. So this is the end of my first vlog for Victober. <laughs> I am aware that they are not the most entertaining for me, just sat in various different places talking about the books I'm reading and not giving any impression, but I hope that you are having a fantastic Victober. Let me know what you're reading in the comments. I hope that you have enjoyed something about this video and until next time, that is all.